So what you're looking at is a 1977 Toyota Micro Mini. The RV part was originally done by Keystone, but I stripped this thing down to the chassis and built it all up new, completion in October 2020. The color is a Datsun color, vanilla cream. The brown is a custom metallic root beer. This Phylon RV fiberglass siding that's on five millimeter plywood that's fastened to one by fours that are screwed to a steel cage. So this RV has steel square tubing running through it. And it's got a few steel uprights in there that you can't see. I've got pictures of that progress uh, through the build. The only thing that I retained were the original windows, the screen door and the frame of the door original. This is the original cabinet framing and sink basin. With the countertop and this table that drops down to make a bed. So that's what's from 1977 from Keystone. But the cabinet has been refurbed with new drawers and faces, new faucet, new two burner stove, grab handle switch for the porch light. There's also one underneath the step exterior. Uh, here's your circuit box, converter, so your shore power, AC, and it automatically converts your DC and charges the deep cycle battery when you're plugged in. Convection toaster oven. You've got a light and a fan up top with a vent that blows through. The headliner is automotive headliner to kind of soften the feel and the noise. LED lights. New Coleman unit with a heat strip, so it's cold and hot. Some LED sconces on both sides of the over cab sleep surface, which is a full size mattress. It's a residential mattress foam. It's uncut. So there is this pass through over the cab that this is removable, but I haven't cut the mattress yet. Uh, I thought maybe next owner could do that. If you wanted to be able to step down into the driving position uh, easily without crawling through from here, it's easier to cut that out. This unit didn't originally come with a shower, but now it does. You see the silver drain in the corner. And the shower head, another LED light, makes plenty of light in this white shower stall. It's an eight gallon black tank that sits under the potty. Your vent stack goes through the roof. This is an accordion style door. They say to leave it closed most of the time so it stays nice and pleated. It's just fastened with a button strap. Now this table has hinges on the rear wall, but it's not really a hinge, it's just a steel rod. So it swings on that to drop down onto these stops, and then the cushions can be spread out to make 
about a twin size bed. It's 73 inches interior width from wall to wall. So a six foot person can stand in here. I'm six feet tall. I'm standing upright with shoes on, but my hair is touching the roof. So if you're taller than six feet, you probably need a different rig. Now the pump and the lights operate off of a battery. The pump is in this cabinet. Remove the door. Here's a switch for the pump. Four gallon Bosch electric unit. Uh, the water heater is 110 volt only. No gas option. The refrigerator is a Frigidaire, separate freezer, this new, again, 110 volt, no gas option. Twenty-three fresh uh, gallon water tank. Twenty-three gallon fresh tank is under driver side dinette cushion. Passenger side dinette cushion houses storage for the deep cycle battery and other things like your water hose and filter. It's currently. Um, utilizing one pound propane canisters to run the stove top. And this obviously is your wiring. I did my best to label things so you know what wire goes where. Now let's go look at the cab. Seats are original upholstery, a couple of tears in the passenger seat. The stitching behind the headrest of the driver's seat has come loose, but the vinyl itself is in pretty good shape. Door panels are clean. Um, this is a radio and GPS nav unit. If we turn it on, you can get your backup camera by pushing two buttons. Now it has heat and defrost, but the factory air, which was an under dash unit, I removed. The compressor was seized and I didn't really think it needed an AC in there. You do get fresh air vents as opposed to having the vent slats in the window, like a lot of older cars and trucks have. Uh, it stays nice and quiet when you just open this vent. Some extra bits and pieces, thermostat and stuff like that. This was the box to delete the factory radio. That's 39,000 original miles. I've dropped the oil pan and looked at the connecting rods and crank and uh, had the original brake pads, and even original light bulbs in the turn lamps and such. Uh, so it's pretty easy to verify it's 39,000 original miles. Electric fuel pump, you can hear it when you turn the key on, kind of a buzzing sound. Starts right up, the 20R. We'll pop the hood. New Weber 3236 carburetor. It's got a regulator. New vacuum lines, new radiator hoses, new ignition components, long tube header. Long tube boosts the torque versus the short tube. Essentially performs the same as the factory manifold. New alternator, new water pump, and fan belt. But it is 
factory rated at 95 horsepower, so moving something that weighs 4,050 pounds down the highway with 411 gears, it's still comfortable at 55 miles an hour, but not so much at 70. You'd really need to be going downhill with a tailwind to even go 70. So it's not interstate appropriate, but back road's perfect. So it's got two dump valves. This is the black dump valve for the black tank. And then the gray tank has a separate valve here on the back. Pulls toward the rear of the vehicle. New exhaust, American Racing Torque Trust 2 15 by 10s on the back, 15 by 6 on the front with Han Cook tires. Here's the original tag from Keystone. Keystone manufacturing date July 77, Toyota manufacturing date April 77, gross vehicle weight rating 4600. Gross axle front, 1850. Gross axle rear, 2900. Here's your fill, your fuel door for gasoline. A 110 GFCI outlet for when you're plugged into shore power and you need power outside. A spare tire mounted and locked to the rear. Here's that backup camera. It does have a receiver hitch but uh, given that you've only got 550 pounds of cargo payload, it's really only suitable for something like a bicycle rack. I would not to a trailer with this rig. Here's your trap door for your power cord. About 20 feet can pull out. Trap door for water, it locks. You can fill the tank from here or just put the regulator and filter and hose of city water and pressurize the system that way. And the windows are louver style, so they open up this way. So there's really no need for awnings over the windows because even if it's raining, the glass will keep the water from getting in. LED marker lights. This is a fun little rig to drive with a four-speed manual, new clutch, new exhaust, handles pretty good, ready for the road.